This video describes equivalence and non-inferiority tests. They're new in Stack Graphics 18. There are two videos. Part one covers the situation where you wish to demonstrate equivalence between two means from independent samples. Part two covers two by two crossover studies. Equivalence analysis is used to demonstrate that a significant difference does not exist, either between two means or between a mean and a target value. This is the reverse of a standard hypothesis test, which is designed to demonstrate that a significant difference does exist. Suppose we have two populations. It could be a set of patients given a brand name drug and a set of patients given a generic. Or it could be measurements made by two different measurement systems. It could also be yields using two production methods. We wish to collect samples from each of the populations and demonstrate that the two population means are equivalent. By equivalent, we mean that the difference between the means is no less than some value delta L and no greater than some value delta U. Equivalence doesn't necessarily imply that the two means are exactly the same, but it means that they're close to each other. For example, delta L might be minus 5, delta U might be plus 5. Equivalence can also be defined using the ratio of the means. For example, we might look at the ratio of mean 1 divided by mean 2. In that case, delta L might be a number like 80%, delta U might be a number like 125%. To understand why we need a special procedure to perform equivalence testing, Let's look at a typical two-sided test to compare two means. The standard two-sided t-test sets up the hypotheses, null hypothesis mu1 equals mu2, alternative hypothesis mu1 not equal mu2. Now remember the result of a hypothesis test is that we'll end up either rejecting the null hypothesis H0 or not rejecting the null hypothesis. The possible conclusions of the standard test are we either reject H0, which means we've demonstrated that the two means are different, or we do not reject H0. That means we've demonstrated that the means may not be different. We haven't demonstrated that they're the same, just that they may be the same. In an equivalence test, we set up the hypotheses differently. The null hypothesis becomes the difference between the means, mu1 minus mu2, is either less than delta L, the lower equivalence limit, or the difference between the means is greater than delta U, the upper equivalence limit. The alternative hypothesis is that the difference is somewhere between delta L and delta U. Now the possible conclusions of this type of test are if we reject H0, we've demonstrated that the means are equivalent. If we don't reject H0, the means may not be equivalent, although they could be. The important thing to remember is that you want to set up your hypotheses so that the alternative hypothesis is what you're trying to prove. In the case of the equivalence test, the alternative is that the difference between the two means is within an acceptable range. We can also perform one-sided equivalence tests. These tests are normally called non-inferiority tests. Again, let's look at how this non-inferiority test 
compares to a standard one-sided t-test. In a one-sided t-test, where we're trying to demonstrate that the mean of the first sample is less than the mean of the second, we set up the null hypothesis such that mu1 is greater or equal to mu2, and the alternative mu1 less than mu2. If we reject the naught, then we've demonstrated that mu1 is less than mu2. If we don't, mu1 may not be less than mu2, although it may be. The one-sided non-inferiority test sets things up a little differently. It'll specify a null hypothesis through mu1 less than mu2 plus delta L. And again, remember delta L is negative. The alternative hypothesis is that mu1 is greater or equal to mu2 plus delta L. If we reject H0, then we've demonstrated that the first mean is not inferior to the second. If we don't reject H0, the conclusion is that the first mean may in fact be inferior to the second. As an example, let's consider some production data. Here you see the yields of 50 batches of a product made using method A, a test method, 50 batches using method B, another test method, and 50 batches using method C, the reference method, which is the method currently being used. What I'd like to do is demonstrate that the test methods give equivalent yields to the reference method. Before we run the equivalence test, it's always a good idea to plot our data. Here I've used a violin plot to show you what the three samples look like. A violin plot is a combination of a box and whisker plot in which the central box covers the middle 50% of the observations and the whiskers go to the smallest and largest observations in the sample combined with a non-parametric density estimator which gives you an idea of the shape of the distributions. I've also added to this violin plot a diamond plot which shows a 95 percent confidence interval for each of the three means. You'll notice that the estimated mean of method A is a little bit less than the estimated mean of method B which is less than the estimated mean of method C. To run the test we want using Stack Graphics 18, we go to the main menu, select Compare, Equivalence and Non-Inferiority Tests, two independent samples. The first dialog box we'll see asks which type of data structure we have. We can set up our data in a couple different ways. The way I've set it up is that I've put the data for each sample in a different data column. We could also have put all the yields in a single column and then put an identifier for the method in a second code column. We could even give the program just the sample means standard deviations and sample sizes and it would be able to do the equivalence test. With data in multiple data columns, the next dialog box you'll see is this one. Here I've indicated to the program the three columns that contain my three samples. I'll then see an analysis options dialog box. The first thing I need to specify is the null hypothesis. There are three choices. The first choice is not equivalent. That corresponds to a two-sided equivalence test. The second choice is inferior, less than. That corresponds to the situation where I want to demonstrate that the first sample is not inferior to the second, where inferior means being less than. 
The third choice is inferior, where inferior is defined as being greater than. I also need to specify how to estimate the standard error when I do my tests. The first choice is to pool the variances of the two samples that you're trying to compare and come up with a common pooled estimate. If I have more than two samples, I could also choose to pool all of the sample variances and get an estimate with more degrees of freedom. I could also, rather than pooling variances, allow for separate variances in each of my two populations. In that case, I'd have to adjust the degrees of freedom of my T statistic to allow for the fact that the variances are unequal. Or if I'm using two separate estimates of the variance, I could choose to do a Z test instead of a T test. The third thing I need to specify are the equivalence limits, the values of delta L and delta U. Basically, what I'm doing here is defining what I mean by equivalent. I also need to specify a value for alpha. That's the significance level for the test. And finally, I can select to display 100, 1 minus 2 times alpha percent confidence intervals. When equivalence testing was first developed, it was common if you were operating at the 5% significance level to display 90% confidence intervals rather than 95% confidence intervals. The reason for that is that we're doing basically two one-sided tests when we're testing for equivalence. A 90% confidence interval will be entirely within the equivalence limits if our test concludes that the means are equivalent. The most common current approach, however, is to use a modified 95% confidence interval that always includes zero. You'll see this in a couple minutes. The result of running an equivalence test in StackGraphics 18 is an analysis window containing one text pane and one graphics pane. We'll look at the output in just a minute, but before we do, I need to cover a little bit more theory. The most common way to demonstrate equivalence is to perform two one-sided tests. We perform a lower test where the null hypothesis is that the first mean is less than the second mean plus delta L, and an upper test where the null hypothesis is that the mean of the first population is greater than mu2 plus delta u. If we can reject both null hypotheses at the 5% significance level, we will have demonstrated equivalence at the 5% level. Let's now look at the output that StackGraphics 18 generates. It's run three comparisons. It's compared the mean of method A to the mean of method B. It's also compared A with C and B with C. In each case, it's run a t-test, two t-tests, the lower test and the upper test, and it's calculated p-values for the lower test and the upper test. In the bottom table, it shows the greater of the two p-values for each comparison. If the maximum p-value is less than 0.05, we will have demonstrated that the two means are equivalent at the 5% level. You'll notice in this case that we can claim equivalence between method A and method B. Those were the two test methods. Unfortunately, we can't claim equivalence between A and the reference method or between B and the reference method. StackGraphics 18 also generates 95% confidence intervals 
for the difference between each pair of means. If the entire confidence interval falls between the lower equivalence limit and the upper equivalence limit, then we have demonstrated that those two means are equivalent. If any part of the confidence interval is either below the lower equivalence limit or above the upper equivalence limit, then equivalence has not been demonstrated. Let me take a moment and show you the equivalence test in action. Here I've loaded the data for methods A, B, and C into the StackGraphics 18 data sheet. I'm now going to go to the top menu to compare equivalence and non-inferiority tests comparison of two independent samples. I have multiple data columns which are named method A, method B, and method C. I'll do a two-sided test and I'll specify the lower differential as being minus 25 and the upper differential as being plus 25. When I press OK, the analysis will be run and I'll see my analysis window. Incidentally, these confidence intervals are not the same as you'd see in the two sample comparison procedure. You'll notice that the ends of these two intervals, comparing method A with C and B with C, both extend down to zero. That makes these 95% confidence intervals even though we're doing two one-sided tests. One more thing. Because I'm comparing yields, it could be argued that I shouldn't be doing a two-sided equivalence test. I should really just be doing a one-sided non-inferiority test. What I really want to show is not that a test method is equivalent to the reference method, but that it's not inferior. To do that, I can press the right mouse button, go to Analysis Options, and switch to Inferior Less Than. This will run just one test. There won't be an upper test anymore, as you can see if you go back to the table. It'll also give me what are called one-sided 95% confidence bounds. The way to interpret the one-sided bounds is as follows. Take a comparison. For example, test method A with reference method C. The lower limit of the confidence bound shows how much less than the mean of method C the mean of method A could be. Unfortunately that lower bound is about minus 48 whereas the lower equ equivalence limit was minus 25. Only if the lower bound was above the lower equivalence limit could I claim non-inferiority. 